Welcome to another insightful episode of the Honeypot Podcast. Today, Alexander Wennerberg and Frederick Hegama are diving into a topic that every organization should be thinking about. The concept of innovation theatre. Are you truly driving innovation in your company or are you just putting on a show? In this episode, Alexander and Frederick uncover the pitfalls of performative innovation, those initiatives that look good on the surface but don't bring real change. They also discuss how a balanced approach can break down silos, elevate diverse perspectives, and avoid the trap of business as usual. And they'll reveal why breakthrough ideas don't come from the lone geniuses, but rather from the strength of a diverse team. Curious to find out if your innovation efforts are real or just theatre. Stay tuned as Alexander and Frederick pull back the curtain. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Honeypot podcast with me alexander vanderberg and fredrik Egamar. how are you doing fredrik i'm doing really well thank you great to hear how about you i'm good thanks a, li- a slight uh, a slight little cold uh, like going every on swede like nowadays every swede. Yeah, exactly yeah. but the uh, reason for the season definitely but in a good i'm in a good mood good that's great, <laughs> great. so what are we, we going to talk about today uh, we're going to be talking about something that uh, often uh, that we often see, that we often uh, um, discuss with a lot of companies out there, uh, and I think that the, uh, uh, the the core of it pretty much stems from not really getting the results that you want as an organization from the the uh, efforts within innovation and change and business development. And we uh, have a an expression. It's not ours, of course, but we we're we're using it from time to time, and it's innovation theater. Yes. What are we meaning with the innovation theater? The theater of pain. Oh. No, but it's um, <laughs> we know by fact when we talk with uh, you know potential clients uh, about the obstacles of getting in a tool in your organization like Hives, where you can collect insights and ideas and basically make other people's voice heard. Mm. Because if you work as a business developer, for example, why should I hear from the guys on the floor? Yeah. Just as an example. Mm. What can they do for me? You know, I'm the experts in business development. I don't need any input from someone else because getting data or input or feedback or ideas from others mm. means that if you don't have um, a process and a method, and a, in this case, maybe a good tool like Hives, to take care of all this and make sure that you can create result with what you are collecting, mm. it could be tough because that means that it's extra work for you. Yep. And uh, people, you know, in general, mankind, I would say, is lazy. We want to do. We are, we always want to do the take the easy path. That's that's how we are programmed in our brain. <laughs> so if there is an easy way. Uh, we will take that easy way. And that means that if I don't have to, even if the company says, you know, we need to work with the continuous improvements, we need to make everybody's voice heard. If I don't have to do that, really, I can create some kind of theater instead, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, th- that, that means that I do what they t- tell me to do, but I don't really do it. Hmm. And I think that there's a there's a few uh, a few pretty interesting signs uh, of this as well. We've seen it all the way from, you know, creating these uh, classical innovation labs, uh, working completely offsite. That's been uh, I, I can uh, straight away debunk uh, that one. Uh, it's been very um, very clear that those doesn't really create real results from from most studies that has been been done about innovation labs off-site. unfortunately unfortunately yeah, unfortunately there's a good i think that there's a good idea behind them uh someone really focusing on the idea or in the innovation track uh given that that's that that depending on how disruptive the work or the different initiatives might be it might be something that needs to be a little bit of a separate track but uh, i keep coming back to the situation where, where if you are making 
changes or if you're going to be making something that affects the 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 organization or the company or the market that we're in eventually uh if you haven't been working with data that's in context from the the real organization working with it or the real customers or clients uh using it or being yeah. affected of it you it, you you'll probably make decisions based on the on the wrong data in the end right absolutely but there's another side of the coin as well in in a way i mean i have a background within communication and advertising for example yeah. and i'm very used to helping companies build up illusions about their products and services <laughs> and their brands and the innovation theater uh, aspect is could be also important for the perception of a company that you know they are really innovative look they do these labs they do this but both externally and internally actually so hmm. by looking into just the results within an external lab it's not really hmm. uh, i would say that's not uh, that's not uh, fair in hmm. a way so you mean Because, that it's a, that it it has a brand value being able to show that you're in under Yeah, like, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, mm. if if you ask me, if if you if I had like a million euro to uh, mm. do advertising about something, or take a million euro to build up an external lab, will we mm. while doing, um, in quotes, advertising and brand building, also are potentially finding new opportunities and business that that mm. that, that could be win win, right? But what we're talking about is not going to change the organization it can oh. be a win absolutely but most of the cases where there is a win in this kind of initiatives it spins off to become a new company or new product or new line or whatever it ne very mm. rarely affect the organization itself some people will get a raise or they will get a new title and and have really fun for a while mm. uh, but when the initiative is over uh it hasn't affected the the or the the core organization that much true true but there's actually uh some really interesting uh, uh science or studies on this uh, uh as well uh, we've been looking a lot or using it a lot when we are um doing workshops or or uh, speeches or lectures in different formats it's the the studies from uh, Lee Fleming at at uh, Harvard uh who's doing some really interesting studies on when it comes to like co-creation and breakthrough ideas yeah uh, and how talking about like the, the myth of the lonely genius uh, yes. so to speak uh and and pretty much uh shattering that myth and showing that it's not it's not true uh <laughs> the the, no, the lonely genius no, not at all could you could you just elaborate a little bit on on like it what the the things behind that study and and uh, yeah so the study yeah. is, is uh, lee uh lee fleming at the harvard uh, business review mm. and his study shows that a, a homogene team with like like-minded people with the same competence uh they're totally lacking the ability to find breakthrough ideas it mm. the study shows it's a totally black hole But if you have a diverse uh, group of people working together, they will have the chance to find the breakthrough ideas. But mm -hmm. they will fail, uh, you know, ten times, sometimes hundred times more than a homogene team. So that's uh, and that's not good if you work if you use the same methodology in the same way of working like you do uh, on a daily basis. But if you if you find new ways of working, like if you adapt the design thinking methodology, if you work with innovative process and stuff like that, so you can cover a lot of ground and you can, you know, discover opportunities, you can test them quickly uh, and determine at, at speed if if we should continue working on them or not, uh, you know, quantity to find quality. Basically, we've been raving about that. That mm. means that the diverse team will always outperform a homogene team. Mm. But if you want to play safe, the home, home, homogene team is the way to go. That, that's, that's how it is, you know? But that will be good enough. You, you do it good enough. You, you, uh, you don't fail that much. But you will never, ever find the breakthrough ideas. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's also important to, to, to clarify there that we... 
we're not saying that uh, the, the complete organization should go for breakthrough ideas uh, all of a sudden, uh, but uh, some part of the organization, whether you'd like it or not, uh, will have to focus in, in some in some way of to of, of on on change because the the world around is changing and I think it's a pretty a, a pretty good way of of looking at it is that it, depending on the f- given the fact that everything is around us are is it is changing over time yeah. if we're not changing or or growing we are automatically pretty much decreasing because everything around us are are moving and and, and growing and changing. Yeah. Positive. It's standing still in a loop. Yeah, definitely. But also, I think, you know, if you look at this with adult eyes, hmm. <laughs> if there is such a thing, <laughs> once again, going back to, you know, there's two sides of the coin. Because hmm. you don't have to ask everyone always. And you don't have to do either or. You can do a mix of them. And I mm. think that's what we're trying to apply when we are working and we were helping clients. And that's something you can set up in our tool hives as well. So let's say you have a process with 10, 10 steps you have to go through. Probably you can do eight of them by yourself if you're the business developer, for example. But two of them would probably be uh, better and quicker if you ask for other perspectives on that doesn't mean that you have to ask for different perspectives on eat all the 10 steps. You can just say, you know, these two steps for this specific initiative, this specific topics, this specific product or whatever it is, I need to get perspectives from a wide um, a variety of people and with, you know, everything from production to, to customers. And, and, and that's how you should think. You don't have to apply this, uh, you know, multiple perspective on every step in the process but you probably need to do it at for a few yeah and, and definitely uh definitely uh at least the first step i would say <laughs> or I, usually I, I, usually know, the first step i uh, not always not okay <laughs> Not always. I mean, you. it might be a very clear problem you have or might mm. be a very clear uh, opportunity you have. And then, so the first step might be defined already. And that means that you may, you, you can continue, you can start working on finding solutions, but those solutions mm. need to be tested throughout the process. Mm. So I, I, I would argue that you, you don't always need to start by asking everybody. You mm. might already know uh, what to to uh, look into, but that doesn't mean that you can skip to get the perspective throughout the process. Oh. Th- th- that's the point, you know. There's there's mm. no right or wrong way to do it, but if you start blank zero, st- start from n- nothing, you of course have to ask uh, for op- opinions. And this is the classic one, you know. Every time I lecture about this, there's always someone usually a man in the audience saying, yeah, but what if Henry Ford had asked the, the customers what they wanted? They, they would said, you're stronger horses, not a car. Mm. Yeah, they would. Because mm. the car didn't exist. But instead, he was looking into the challenges they had mm. and he found an innovative approach to it and an innovative yep. solution to it. But could he have given them stronger horses? Of mm. course. Mm. And is that and I, a bad solution? No, no, it's not a bad. No, definitely not. Uh, it, it that's a that's a, a a better solution than the current one was then, but and now as well. I, if you look in hindsight, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Given this the the climate uh, yeah. uh, factor of it, definitely, uh, that's true. Uh, but but I keep coming back to you know that that uh, that quote that Henry Ford quote or. Uh, that that comparison with with the Henry Ford solution, mm-hmm. I keep coming back to 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 the fact that I think that it's it's a pretty unfair comparison to make in the in the sense that that's already from the beginning the thought of asking what do you want is probably the wrong question to ask in uh, <laughs> from from the beginning meaning that if you if if he would have asked uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, 
like what kind of products or what kind of solutions or what kind of ideas or, or services would you like? But rather, what would you like to achieve? Like if he, he, he was working with the challenge uh, transporting uh, people from A to B faster, right? Uh, uh, yeah, probably. One of them. Or at least in his head. In I don't know some the kind brief. Of <laughs> no, I don't, me neither. <laughs> but 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 you but got I'm a just, point there, and yeah. I, and I totally agree with you. But but mm. it's just the fact that there's a lot of okay for this example. Let's talk mm. about business developers. There's a lot of business developers out there who think they can do the job by themselves, mm. a- and to them, it will be all about asking other people what they want because they they are not in the mindset of working with with you know would you how how could you you know how would we do this or how could we or they don't they're not in the mindset of asking the right questions so to them they just see themselves being bombarded with requests from random people in the organization that doesn't mm. uh, know a shit about what they're doing that's what they Mm. think you know Mm. and and of course uh, you know this mythology would be a big obstacle for them to adapt because they they think you know i know what i do i'm expert in this i don't want to know about you know having extra vacation days or a new coffee machine I need to fix the business you know we need Mm. to earn more money and and Mm. that got nothing to do with this but he's so wrong because it got a lot to do with that, you know, because yeah. it's always a holistic thing, you know, a, a small so, uh, a small problem could be very big when you start looking into it and, and mapping it out because it could be aspects of a lot of different chains of reactions. But 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 I really want to stay in, in uh, there's one thing here that I think is very, very important uh, and could could have a very big effect on whether people within business development or change are applying this or not. Mm. And it's the fact that uh, going back to the Henry Ford uh, comparison where he probably, a, a person doing the right thing would, would have probably uh, asked like what value someone uh, wants to let, let's go go back to the situation where where the the thing that people wanted was probably that they uh, that they would have liked something that could take them from A to B faster. Let's say that. Mm. I keep comparing it a little bit to the fact where let's say the iPhone came out mm-hmm. and uh, people had yeah. were, were using these Blackberries. They're apparently Blackberry are still around, but uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, like physical keyboards, mm-hmm. um, uh, typing on the on the on the phone, um, and you know, people were. I I I can't imagine at least that mm-hmm. people were asking for. Can we just integrate the keyboard on the touch screen? I don't think that that was the main driver behind it. I think that the main driver was probably. Can we make the 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 screen real estate bigger, larger, yep. so I can yep. fit more or read easier in some kind of way? And probably Apple or Steve Jobs or the team behind it was working with the the brief or the challenge or some kind of value in how can we solve the challenge of making the uh, screen larger, mm. but without having to make the complete phone that much lar- larger. Yeah, yeah, and. And I just think that that's something that's very, very important to keep in mind there. That if you're getting if you're getting bombarded with all of these like requests or feature requests or ideas or solutions, that you think that you know, I'm I'm just getting all of these ideas thrown at me, and we we can't prioritize them all. If if you try to look at them as pretty much as signals mm-hmm. to a, a, an underlying challenge or an underlying problem. That would probably give you get you off to a better start. Absolutely, and I was thinking about going back to the Henry Ford thing. You know, if he had uh, put together a panel, because this this is mm. the thing as well. You don't mm. have to ask everybody about anything all the time. You can put mm. together a panel. 
let's say you put together a panel about you know for with people back back then and they were looking okay so what's the situation today what's good today yeah we have very strong horses we have this breed uh, that's mm. stronger than the other you know it's it's kind of nice it's uh it's it's a part of the family and so on yada 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 that's a good thing what is the bad thing yeah you have to feed it it's uh it's getting older <laughs> it's <laughs> it's limited i have to have four of them and stuff like that and then when you started to map out you know the the pros and cons with the with with the current situation then you will see okay we need some something that doesn't need food mm. something that you don't have to feed with expensive food and some someone you have to you know pick up their shit after when they're working and stuff like that <laughs> so uh and then you're starting to okay wh- what can we do instead something that are as strong but doesn't need food uh, in that sense it, 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 that's where you know the real Mm-hmm. solutions the breakthrough solutions are starting to happen mm. uh and because if you did a workshop with um going back then that would be like a, a horse breeder or a veterinary who who was in the workshop and trying to to make the existing solutions stronger and better and faster and stuff mm. like that but instead they have mechanics and you know different perspectives on it and said you know yeah we can do that with steam engine and that's actually stronger than 10 horses. Oh, wow. And then you th- then start things start to happen. Mm. So that's why it's important. But going back to it, and I really want to emphasize on it that you don't have to ask everybody about everything all the time. You can you know, you know, if you have a process, you can make sure that you get the right voices you need when you need them. So, I would say that the mix between the lonely genius <laughs> and the power perspective is absolutely the strongest thing because a lot of innovation or or change or you know consultants uh, we, we as we are we we talk about you should do this and you should that and stuff like that and we believe in the power perspectives but you you can't run around and ask everybody all the time you also have to do the yeah. work mm. and and the fact is that it, we talk a lot about breaking down silos, you know, in a company. You have different mm. departments, silos, and, and and you need to find a way of, of working together. Yes, you need to do that for a specific amount of time. And then you need to go back to your silo and do the work because that's mm. where you do the work the best. So I, I would say, like, you have to find the perfect mix to yeah. make it even harder. <laughs> De- def- definitely but it's a bit but it's all about that balance and i think that that balance is for, from my perspective when i'm looking at, at our clients i think that that balance is found pretty naturally after a while well like where uh, when should we ask a larger group of people about this these insights or ideas and when should we uh, going back to the smaller uh, team and start it like yeah and yeah. that's why why you have to flip it uh, mm-hmm. because instead of of opening up and waiting for people to come mm-hmm. to you with requests of things that they find important mm-hmm. uh, to them you need mm-hmm. to ask them specific questions because mm-hmm. those specific questions will give you specific answers to the questions you are giving yeah exactly and I, and I think that most most people out there could probably like uh, uh understand the, the the thought behind like the classical like idea box or suggestion box that uh, yeah. most companies had had like uh, historically or traditionally but think of it like more of a proactive uh, or an active uh, <laughs> different active suggestion boxes where you are asking different kind of questions or briefs or challenges mm. or opportunities that you need to uh, capture insights or ideas or solutions for so going out there and actively searching for what kind of pains and gains and challenges and problems do we have out there uh, to that's important to solve and then yep. then going back to define it and then going out again uh, these are the, the specific challenges we don't just want any kind of ideas we want ideas on these kind of challenges and and that will create value for our organization and company and customers and so on yeah and also open up to people that are not used to give uh, their insights or ideas on things because in an organization usually there are a, f- a few what, what's called entrepreneurs 
and and they will jump on these questions all the time and and that's also a little bit worrying because then suddenly the only voices you hear are these few people Hmm. and so that's why it's so important to make sure that you have a variety of voices that you're listening to but you do it actively and you do it uh, proactive by asking Hmm. the the questions you need to have answered not Hmm. just open questions Exactly. And what's interesting behind that is that we've seen very clearly that being specific in the questions or when capturing all of these insights or ideas or suggestions, does it has that side effect. Yeah. <laughs> the, the more specific you're, you're becoming, the more you are increasing pretty much like the confidence or the self-confidence of people being able to, to uh, uh, share and, sub- and, and participate in, in these things as well. So, as usually, we wanted to share something practical with you that you hopefully could use in your day-to-day work and organization as well. And this time, Frederick has something to share as an example of how you can do to avoid the innovation theater and the myth of the lonely genius. Yes. So, I've been working with a a huge company in Sweden in the public sector. Uh, I've been helping them to develop their uh, development process and also create toolboxes and, and educate the staff on how to, you know, create results out from this sort of. And they really adapted to this way of thinking and uh, and uh, and uh, design thinking as an approach because they know that... Um, their product or services will be better if they get different perspectives working on it. But they also have um, you know, a daily business to take care of. So in that case, this, this um, design thinking element ended up being something called uh, water holes, where you know, uh, the animals on the, on the savanne uh, meets up to drink water and, and, and uh, you know, to get ready for the day, sort of. And in this company, they set up this waterhole that it's like gates in the process that you you, you do a lot of work, you know, um, in silo, if I may say so. But then you always have an element where the people from the different parts of the organization uh, meets up, you know, virtually uh, in in a tool like Hives. And uh, and and get the fully you know insight of, of where they are and 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 the way they're going and so on to give their um, perspective to it. And in that case, we're working with scoring. You know, so you give them the status of something, and then they give you the data. It's a very quick mm. way of getting a joint vision and also status and stuff like that. And this needs to be time, um, you know, uh, limit. Uh, so let's say that you have two days to give your your thoughts or or, or maybe one day or two weeks or whatever that is up to your organization but that means that if this let's say there are eight people that needs to give their their wish uh, their thoughts on something uh they get these two days to do that and if they haven't given you the days they automatically at automatically approve it sort of mm. So this waterhole um, um, approach to to this is is re- really good start. Uh, if you want to involve and, and get perspective from different departments and, and the, the diverse point of view on your solutions or your problems, uh, without having to source uh, ideas from the whole organization. Great. So start small. Wonderful. I think it's such a such a wonderful like visual visual way of naming it as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I can a... totally see the, the, the giraffe and the yeah. and the hippos meeting exactly. up. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> and definitely, uh, definitely good to have some create some kind of urgency as well, and in in like sharing people's thoughts as well. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 today with, you know, tools like AI and stuff like that, you can make reports and summarize things so you can at a glance understand something and give your um your insights and and, and your point of view on something, uh, especially if you're working like we do in in hives with with scoring, which we find is a really effective way of getting qualitative data. Um it, 
it, it's it's easy, quick, and really, really good. Hmm. Definitely. Great. Uh, that was all for this uh, episode. And uh, as usual, just want to uh, say that as well, uh, that if you have any colleagues or friends who are working within this field of innovation or change management and continuous improvement, please share this with them. Uh, we love having more more voices uh, heard and we love getting thoughts and questions to the to the podcast as well. So feel free to uh, share any any thoughts or questions with us as well. And we'll bring bring them up as many as we can uh, as well from our experiences and our customers as well. But uh, with that said, I just want to say uh, a big uh, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we are doing this uh, both as a uh, podcast and we're also uh, available on YouTube. If you're listening and listening to this on, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're listening to podcasts, you can you can uh, tune into YouTube as well and search for Honeypot Podcast to, to see it uh, there as well if you'd like to do that. Yes. Wonderful. Good. Thank you very much, Frederick. And thank, thank you. you for listening. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Honeypot Podcast brought to you by Hives.co. We hope you found today's insights valuable and inspiring. If you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, we'd love to hear from you. You can easily reach us by searching for Alexander Wennerberg or Frederick Hagemer on LinkedIn. Or feel free to drop us an email at alexander at hives.co or frederick at hives.co. And hey, if you want to learn more about how Hives.co can help you capture insights, ideas, and feedback from your team or customers to make smarter business decisions, head over to Hives.co. It's the easiest yet most powerful tool out there for driving innovation and continuous improvement. Until next time, keep innovating. And thanks for being a part of the Honeypot community.